Hello everyone and welcome to ProRPA.com. Today we're going to walk through um, the data variables, the concept, the data types associated with these data variables, their scope, and a few activities as well. So um, without further ado, let's get started, right? So once we get to the part where we have to select what type of program we're going to create, in the UI path, this is the screen, and we have a few options that you know we can create a blank, you know, program altogether where we have to write everything from the scratch, or um, we have we can have a simple process which is gonna be like a flowchart, right? So we're gonna go ahead with the flowchart this time, and we can put in any name we want in here. Let's say um, first exercise, and we're gonna create this flowchart. So. What UiPath does is it is gonna give us um, a basic, you know, a program which actually is not functioning, but um, just to give an overview of, you know, how a program looks. But we're gonna delete all these activities and we are gonna build our program from scratch. So um, this is how a flowchart looks like. As you can see, um, a flowchart is already added by UiPath itself because that's what we chose in the beginning, which is a f uh, name main and it has a start node as well which is going to denote you know as to from where our program is going to start now the first activity we are going to use is assign assign activity is going to assign um, some value to a variable we're going to have two variables in our program so we have used two assign activities we used connectors which means we're connecting them from the preceding activity to you know maintain a program flow and um, you know, program starts from the start, it goes to the first assign activity, it goes to the second assign activity, and there on. Now, in the first uh, assign, we're gonna put in the variable name, but first we're gonna create a variable. So here it is. You can either press Control K or right click and set variable name, and we're gonna put the name as first number, right? We're gonna assign some random value to it, let's say 76. Similarly, for the second variable, we're gonna assign by creating it first, and assigning some sort of uh, random value to this variable as second number, right? Uh, I have put in as 43 in here, and we have two variables available now in our program. Okay, so these are well connected. We can see in the variable pane as well. Um, we can delete this one. We have two variables, first number and second number. They have their associated type, their scope, and we could have put in a default value as well but since we have connected it to the start node itself, the assign activity is gonna take care of this part, so we don't need to. But yes, we could have used the default as well, right? And uh, as you can see, the variable type is used generic value because that's where it is automatically done. We're gonna change it to integer because we'll be dealing with only integers uh, in this program. And you can, you know, see that, you know, I've put in the integer values. So, um, if you know for sure that you know this is the variable type that you're gonna use, always put in that variable type instead of going with the generic one. Next activity we're gonna use is the flow decision. So flow decision is um, like a decision box and it is gonna help us make a decision in our program. So um, we're gonna decide that you know which number is greater than which one, right? So um, we have connected it to the decision box to our preceding activity and uh, in this decision box in a, one of its properties we are going to set that condition you ask to which one is greater so here you can see the condition is here and we're going to expand this a little bit and we're going to say that you know first number greater than second number um uipath automatically pops in the um, um the variable names as well so that's pretty handy and we've just put in first number greater than second number we have a decision and if it is going to be true the program is going to go to through the true node of decision box and if it is false it's going to go through the other side and now we're going to use two separate activities the first one is going to be a message box so message box um, i'm going to show what it does in uh, in a few minutes but we have added this activity and uh, the second activity we're going to use is right line which is right on the top here itself and here okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put in some value to this message box as to like what message do we want to print. So let's say message box says that first number is greater, right? 
So um, what we're going to do is um, if the program goes to this message box, this message would be printed. If it is good, if it goes to the right line activity, it's going to say that second number is greater. And we're going to connect it to our decision box. So if the decision is true, it's going to go to the message box. If not, it's going to go to the right line. And we always use um, good names, you know, so that it becomes the program becomes self-explanatory. So uh, we've put in like a sign value to first variable, a sign value to second variable so that it becomes, you know, comprehensible for any other person who will be looking at your program. It is also a, a very good practice to, you know, always save your program. So here it is. I just saved it and uh, we have a program ready, right? Looks pretty good. Assigning the value and decision and we're going to run it from here. All right. So the program ran and uh, we got the message box saying that the first number is greater. It works fine. The message box was done. Now, uh, this is what message box does, right? It showed us a, a window and uh, with our message. Now I'm going to change um, these true and false conditions. I'm going to, um, you know, make it the other way around so that I can give you um, an overall look of or a look and feel of how the right line uh, activity works, right? So logically, this is not correct. Second number is not actually greater, but that's the message that I'm printing right through this right line. I'm going to run this first. I'm going to save it and um, right. And once I run this, um, the program started and ended. And we go to the output console and we see that once the program started, it said the second number is greater and the program ended. So uh, right line simply prints it in the console itself. Message box shows an external window. And we have used a pretty good example, you know, here we got a pretty good overview of what a bot can do. And um, this is it for this week. Um, I hope you liked the video and uh, it uh, hopefully gave you a good overview of what UiPath can do. Please do subscribe, like and share my post and um, happy automating. Thank you very much. And comment.